Good morning. I hope everybody that listens is keeping well. I'm outside for a walk and uh, it's pretty cold. Uh, I was thinking uh, on my way here, because I come here every day to check on my chickens, if they have everything they require. Um, on my way here I was thinking about um, why there isn't any innovation in the sciences. Everything seems to be stagnant. Uh, we are still using, you know, methods developed decades ago, sometimes, you know, hundreds of years ago when we are still using them. And there hasn't been any moving forward uh, all, uh, compared to other technologies, right, to other uh, areas. I mean, that are ages, you know, into the future, um, almost the art, like in cinema and, and science fiction, etc., uh, uh, science is mimicking, you know, copying art, and and they uh, have been developing, you know, technologies that is completely crazy, you know, stuff that we used to see, you know, in science fiction films is now coming to reality. But unfortunately, um, the sciences are not following the same uh, the same trajectory, and and I think I know why. You know. Um, when you have uh, trillions of donors that donate money for research, you know, and uh, solutions are never found, because if so solutions was found, then the money would stop flowing, right? So I think, uh, or money laundering, right? Uh, imagine uh, that these international and or local foundations and organizations and laboratories, you know, indeed found, you know, some innovation and, and um, a breakthrough that uh, render all their existence, you know, obsolete. So we found the answer, uh, we move on, but there's um, an incentive to not move forward, to stay stagnant for the purposes of justifying their existence or and, you know, uh, money laundry. Uh, I think these foundations, international or local, are for the purpose of money laundry. Just uh, like that old saying, one hand washes the other. So, for instance, in medicine, we are still using, um, you know, Neanderthal technology from centuries, decades ago. And uh, there hasn't been any innovation because there's no point in having an innovation because if there is an innovation, all of that, um, you know, pyramid would be demolished. And therefore, you know, everybody that participates in that shady business of laundry and one hand washes the other, you know, would have to find other, you know, creative ways of getting by to find another way of laundering their cash. So uh, I think that's one of the reasons why there hasn't been any innovation. You know, the same way, you know, throwing money at things it doesn't work uh, uh, for instance you want to um, get rid of, of, of or of something is not by throwing money at the the, the, the problem that's going to fix it because the people who uh, get that money will get addicted to that process and they will never find solutions because the money just keeps coming so why find solutions you know why that doesn't make any sense um, throwing money at things is not a solution what we need really is uh, skills, people and will, of course, uh, people using uh, reasoning and will and their own skills, you know, to and um, and change things. Right. It's not with money. If you throw money, you'll just create addiction. You know, money creates addiction. It's an addiction in itself. So if you start giving, you know, throwing money uh, like that, it just create more addiction and uh, um, uh, stagnation, you know, and people will justify by any means their existence in exchange for this money. So anyway, um, before coming here, I was listening to this live stream. Someone was showing um, the new technology that uh, has been hitting the world in terms of war. And um, so ever since these past, I don't know, years, there's been lots of sightings of um, of UFOs, you know, UFOs, and and since everybody's camera or, or or video is so out of focus, you know, when you know looking at these distant objects, and uh, 
the illumination that the cameras capture, it seems they are oval or or an orb-like type of you know um, structure. It's because your camera is out of focus. Because if you really you know uh, focus on the detail, you would see it's just uh, another drone or another man man driven device. I would suppose it them to be drones because at those altitudes and the time that they spend up there. Uh, it's uh, inhumanly possible, you know, because humans have you no know, requirements to survive in atmosphere, you know, in, in this world. So I would imagine that these are, you know, drones. Anyway, the drones from little drones the size of a bicycle are now the size of buses. Yes, drones the size of buses. They can put them up there, you know, and um, these are the... Um, the devices that have been witnessed all over the world uh, what's happening this is the new you know industrial military you know way of warfare and um, uh, they can use this to uh, literally you know uh, fly over the target and just drop drop you know or you place in the coordinates and they just go like in a suicide attack but there's no one driving so it's perfect right so uh, so anyway, that's what's been going on, and uh, you know, there's lots of tensions in the world at the moment, and it seems everybody, you know, is agitating, flexing, in, uh, you know, flexing their technology to intimidate, you know, everybody. They are flexing. That's why there's lots of sightings of UFOs recently, flying all over the place, and this is all technology made by man. All right, you know. Everything that you you know can perceive with your senses in this world of the is of this world. It doesn't come from elsewhere. That's it's not alien. No, no, no. Um, that is a fallacy, in my opinion. If it was indeed alien, a substance or a device or anything, just by its mere existence would disrupt. The, um, uh, the 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 mechanics of this world causing it to implode literally so everything in this world is of this world and uh, nothing can come in or out except i would say for the soul the soul is the only one transmigrant who can migrate between worlds migrate between worlds in and out and um, and it, it even can stay here okay if it even can stay here, I don't know if it's definitely, but it can stay here even after the body disappears, the soul can stay around. And it's what we call ghosts, you know. It's just excorporated beings that have become so attached to this place that they decided to stay around, you know, stick around. And uh, I don't know if it's forever, although it could be, <clears throat> because the soul is immortal anyway. But uh, a thing that, uh, you know, that modern technology has been capturing, you know, as technology, technology moves forward, we are, you know, it becomes more easy to prove these things. And people are capturing them in video and audio and with electromagnetic, you know, um, in the spectrum and, and with technology, they've been capturing, you know, and they've, uh, these existence of these beings. And actually, they've noticed that they absorb energy around them. They literally do, and they, they, they emanate this cold cathode effect, very cold. And um, when they get to, you know, possible targets, they suck the energy out of them because they wish to return to the material, you know. They wish, wish to return to the corporeal. And uh, I think sometimes they succeed. Uh, for instance, in a near-death experience, you know, the... The soul is fooled that uh, the, this corpse is dead, this physical is dead and moves on, you know, migrates. And uh, these are excorporated beings, you know, they notice the presence of a body that has no occupant, so to speak. Oh, I'm going to occupy this vehicle and drive it from now on. And um, so hospitals, cemeteries, you know, areas in which people have departed, like battlefields, etc., are filled with these things. And uh, if they have the chance to occupy an empty vessel, they will, you know, so, 
So anyway, I've been talking for 10 minutes. All right. Have a nice day. Tell me what you guys think.